Hello and welcome to the Vikings War of the Clans Slingshot Channel Special. <laughs> I have been commissioned by the makers of the game to make a weapon that is themed accordingly. And I love that because the Viking era and medieval area in general has so many cool weapons that I always wanted to build. Let me explain a little bit about the game first. Well, obviously it plays in the age of the Vikings. It's a strategy game. Um, much like the strategy games like Populus and so on that I loved playing when I was younger. And um, they actually told me, well, why don't you just play it for five minutes? It's free anyway. And, well, I did that and I have to confess, I spent a lot more than five minutes playing the game. It really is fun. It has really cool looking 3D graphics that um, are quite new, I think, on mobiles. So it's, it's really a mobile game, although I think there is also an app for uh, PC. Um, but anyway, um, it is what I really love is that you have all the time in the world. So it's not like one of these shooters where you know you get easily killed, but you have time to plan and you can train your men and always you have these cool graphics with it. I understand that sometimes they even have battles involving three million players at the same time. Really, whole countries fighting against each other. Wow, that's pretty cool. Although I haven't been a part in one of these battles, but maybe I should. Sounds exciting. So here is what the makers of the game are offering for you. Um, first of all, if you use one of the links down below <laughs> to download uh, the app, then um, you will get 200 gold coins for free. And uh, this is kind of the currency in the game. You can use it to do all kinds of cool things. But here comes the thing. I've been looking at what can we build from that era and looking at some of the cool gameplay videos that the guys sent me, I discovered this. Yes, obviously it's a mangonel, you know, it's, it looks like a little bit like a cross between a trebuchet and uh, one of the uh, standard mangonels that use buckets instead of slings. And I think it's really cool looking Viking design. I will try to build a replica, a small size replica, being as close to the original as possible because I want to find out if that thing would really have fired, since I've never seen one, not even in small scale. So this video pretty much is a tutorial also that shows you a few tricks of mine, how to make a mangonel like that. And also it's a challenge because the makers of the game really are giving away prizes for cool models that are done after that. And they have a Facebook page and on that Facebook page, link below, you will find details about the contest. I heard that, you know, they are having a three week window and the winners get, you know, really awesome prices. I think the first prize will be 5 million gold coins in the game. And I think you can probably buy a whole country for 5 million gold coins. All right, so here comes the tutorial and the entire build process. If you don't want to watch it, um, you can simply skip it and go right to the shooting part. I know, I know, that's just a costume, you know, for Halloween. And this actually, I know that the Vikings didn't have horns on the helmets, but that is not even a helmet, and those aren't real horns. I'm only doing this so you guys can have some fun with me. So, please don't give me all these nasty comments. <laughs> all right, so that's the goal. Let's build this in small size. So. If I look at this very bad printout, you can see a few details already. So you can see that it actually consists of wooden pieces that we need to put together. This here actually looks like it would be a winch, but it is not. This is actually the winch. And this obviously has been designed so that you can put a pole in and then rotate it. This here is actually the blocking mechanism for the rope. And the rope actually is what gives it spin. Let me show this to you on a better picture. This is actually a printout of a picture that I found on the internet and I believe that the designers of the game used it to um, build the catapult. Of course this is actually not as nice, not nearly as nice as the one in the game, but functionality is the same. Here you can see the twisted rope that actually gives it the power. This is the medium that stores the energy. This is the winch system and as you see it has a holdback device so it doesn't unwind. This is the, uh, the pouch and you see that the pouch has three ropes and two of them are anchored on the throwing arm and one is only loosely hooked over this uh, piece of uh, steel here. And you see that this is actually formed in an angle 
so that you have an influence on the launch angle here. So that the more this is twisted towards the front, the flatter the shot will be. We're starting out with some plywood. Use the thickest you can get. The thicker the better, the more power you can actually add to the device later on. This is the side plate that I sketched from the original graphics. And now we have to saw it out and then make another one. You can use a jigsaw for the whole thing, but I like my coping saw and will only cut out the rough pieces with the jigsaw. These two holes are actually required so that the saw blade from my coping saw can fit through and we can remove these parts. So this is the side view and later on we'll have to attach lots of things to make it looking like these are individual beams. But of course, sawed out from a single piece of plywood, this has far more integrity and is a super base for our catapult. Now we have two identical pieces for left and right and now we have to start building the actual uh, beams that connect those two. And ideally you just have a little bit of uh, wood. Should be solid, but can be any kind really, and this is uh, simply bought in the hardware store. We will need four pieces of the same length and one that is actually a little longer. Here is our four pieces and number five a little longer. The longer one will actually be placed right here and it will be the piece that the uh, launching arm is hitting. Therefore we are recessing it a little bit into the uh, post and therefore we have to saw this piece out. Now we've marked the four spots where the beams will be attached to and we need to drill two holes for the screws through each one of these rectangles now. As you see we nicely sunk in the screws and that is because we want to cover the screw heads up with some fancy applications later on so it looks like a real catapult. It is important that you pre-drill the holes into these blocks because otherwise the screw will split the little beam here. Okay, now we have all four of them attached and it's time to connect the other side. So now our catapult for the first time looks a little bit completed. Don't glue it yet if you want to glue it because you probably have to take it apart a few more times. But the geometry of the entire system is now in place. Now we have to drill holes through here and here in order to fix the main catch beam inside of the plywood. Note that I stabilized the plywood with two small screws because otherwise it will easily split as we tighten the main screw. This is now rock solid. Now for the throwing arm. I suggest you go out and find a nice piece of wood like this one here. Debark it of course and file it and it would be ideal if it would be hardwood. This is actually a piece of hazelnut but you could take any other hardwood piece. And then uh, remove the bark uh, so that it looks natural and it also will be a lot more sturdy than one of the prefabricated rods that you can buy in the hardware store. <laughs> so.
So we now have our throwing arm and we also have the catapult. And now it's time to decide whether you want to propel this with rubber or whether you want to use the original rope idea that has been used by the Vikings in fact. So we'll go for the rope just because we want to try to stay as original as possible. But of course if you now want to use rubber what you need is you need an axis. And you can do this with a threaded rod or something you, because then you can use nuts and washers to clamp it in into the middle. And then you basically only have to use some rubber bands, attach it here and around here and you're done. But with the rope it's a little more difficult. And we start by drilling holes here and here. Now we need to find some rope. You can actually also use paracord and so on. I just use this natural looking uh, sisal rope. It's just only four millimeters. You can use thicker or thinner. It doesn't really matter much. And then you find a piece of wood that is a little longer than your catapult is wide and you loosely wrap the rope around it. Like that. And in the end, when you're almost finished, then you tie the two open ends, just like that. And then you slip the rope loops out of it. And now if you want, you can tie on each side so that it doesn't really slip apart. Just like this. And now the power for the throwing arm will all come from the winding. We're going to wind it together and then it will want to unwind, accelerating the post with that. Now we need two pieces of a rod. You can use a wooden rod or I just like to use this aluminum. Now the next thing you do is you put a little bit of string through the loop, just like that. And then you put the string ends through the opening and pull. And then you clamp the whole thing with the rod, like that, okay, and you repeat this on the other side. Okay, this was a little too hard for the blunt aluminum rod, so I put a little arrow in, which because of the pointy tip is easier to put through. But that's going to change later on because when it comes under tension it will lengthen a bit and then we'll actually be glad for the extra play. Anyway, now you separate the two parts like this and put in the little launch club like that. And now you start twisting. And you do this in an even fashion. Turn on both sides. And as you see, now the club wants to hit the block. And by putting up more tension, you can always increase the power of your catapult. Let's check it out. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> it actually has kick. And as you see, you can still easily tighten this more. And this is necessary because in, uh, in a different humidity, when the weather changes, then also the tension of the ropes will change. Therefore it is necessary that you can change the uh, tension in the field. That was very common in uh, medieval times. All right, as you see, the power was already getting a little much for this thing here. So I added another wooden beam. And also I think I have to strengthen the side because look what happens when you cock it. Can you see that the wood is already working here? We will be building the braces from this piece of metal that I found in the hardware store. And of course we have to cut lots of pieces off to make it fitting. Now we've braced it on both sides. I know it's not ideal that that has to happen, but as you see in the original picture from the game, uh, it was not uncommon that people had to stabilize wooden constructions with a little bit of steel at, at the weak spots. So um, I'm actually still in style, I think. Okay, this works much better now. And it's not bending anymore. We note that we also replaced the aluminum with the steel nails because the aluminum proved too weak. 
incredible what kind of force this little thing already contains. We are getting closer to doing our first shot, but first we have to develop and build the pouch. And as you see, it's attached to two hooks in the tip of the throwing arm and a third one that is hinged over this bent steel rod here. So that is what we now have to construct. I found these in the hardware store and I think they are just perfect for our purpose. Hopefully. <laughs> Now we have to construct the pouch and for that we use a piece of leather. You could also use some leather from an old shoe or something. Just make sure it's not too thin. So just don't use like an old leather jacket or so except if it's really thick. And of course we first have to cut out a round piece and then hem it in a little bit. So with this little trick of mine we formed a perfect basket or pouch from the round patch of leather and it fills projectiles like this golf ball perfectly well. Okay it is done. As you see I've attached the rope quote unquote to uh, the uh, throwing arm and as you see this part is just a loop while these are tied to the eyeballs and if I fire then the loop will slip off. Now it's time for the first test shot. Okay. And shoot. Oops. It works, but as you saw, it shoots way too low and therefore we have to change the angle of the nail until we have the throwing angle that we want. Okay, next try. Right. Ah! <laughs> that was a major success, don't you think? Okay, one more try. And fire! <laughs> I think this worked rather fine. And keep in mind, you can always add power simply by winding it up a little more. Very easy job. <laughs> Our next job, of course, is to build this little winch. I know that we don't need a winch for this, but we want to make this like looking real and therefore a winch is absolutely necessary. For that we first need an axis and I have decided to use this 14 mm wooden rod. Now what we'll need is two parts. One part is the wheel that actually will be used for turning the whole construction. And this is the blocking wheel that will make sure that it's not spilling off as soon as you release the force. But first we will drill the holes through because that is always the first thing you do.
Next we will have to build the release mechanism and for that we first need an anchor for the hook on the throwing arm side. And therefore we need to saw out this two times and then an intermediate piece for the middle one time. And now we have to saw out the counterpart. Okay, it's a new day and our winch mechanism is finished. You can see that there is the rope attached to this here. Actually these two parts make sure that this is all spooling up in this place and not going too far to the left or to the right. But in fact it's not necessary since it's only a few windings so uh, this is just only decoration maybe. And also as you see the locking mechanism is in place so when I start winding Gravity is lowering the blocking rod here and we can cock the weapon comfortably. You can of course turn this by hand but the original idea is that you put in the little lever here and then normally with the help of a few men you would cock the weapon like that. And then you put the notch here over the little noose and then we can attach a little bit of rope to the uh, pin here but basically we would pull. Bang! <laughs> so now that it works we have to make it more beautiful, more looking like the original picture from the game. And therefore we unfortunately have to take it apart. As you see we have now scratched the wood lengthwise like in the direction that the beams quote unquote are running and also we used a power file to roughen up the surface so it looks a little bit like it would be hewn with an axe instead of uh, an industrial product. Now this looks a lot more rough hoon, don't you agree? <laughs> I hope that once it's painted it will look very convincing. And now we are filling up all the screw heads with a little bit of car putty because those are anachronisms and we don't want them in the final design. And that is the result. Now everything is nicely closed and we can start with the painting job and the first painting layer is black. And we can also then lightly spray paint it. Just to make sure it's not too even. The throwing arm is already a natural piece of wood and therefore we've just roughened it up and now we will oil it with teak oil. Okay, while the paint is drying we're preparing some applications like this one here. Of course uh, it will later on look like metal, like a metal brace and we drilled in some uh, fake holes to uh, give it this riveted look later on. This is our collection of reinforcements that later on are supposed to look like metal with nails. Now we have spray painted them black. Now we're using silver spray for wheels and we use this rub on trick. Take a piece of cloth, go into the paint and then we are rubbing it on. 
like this. And it will give it this rusty finish that we would expect on a piece of metal made by a medieval blacksmith. And this is the result also on my finger. <laughs> and now we'll use some two component glue to glue it on. Now we want to make these wolf's heads here. I first thought those are lions, but then many Vikings probably never saw a lion in their life. So I decided that these are wolves. That will be the outline of our little wolf's head. And here we have our two wolf brothers. <laughs> I'm such a lousy sculptor, sorry for that. Okay, and then we start brushing. Now we've glued on the wolf's heads. Don't they look pretty? <laughs> and now we have to make the shields. Okay, now we have the two parts. I painted the shield parts black and here's our very cool shields <laughs> and now we're making these little torches here and we use this shashlik piece and this uh, round rod to make them and as you see with a little bit of paint they're looking beautiful and here it is the Viking mango nail <laughs> let me show you its features it has these wolf heads in bronze. It has the shields that protect the uh, operators. It has the torches to give it some illumination in the dark. It has the same winch system, I'll show that to you later, with a blocking device and the lever arm that you can you know use to wind it back because it will be very hard to wind it back. And as you see, it's entirely rope powered, just like the original. It doesn't have wheels like the originals, because that's also the reason why the Romans called this the onager. And that is because it kicks like a mule, really, when you fire it, because of the huge forces involved. And therefore, if you would attach wheels to it, uh, the wheels would be smashed to pieces in no time. So therefore, they may have attached wheels temporarily for transportation, but certainly not for uh, actual operation. Okay, so let's do a test shot with it. First of all, of course, we have to cock the whole thing. And that works like this. Okay, we're almost there. All right. And now, oops, <laughs> we have to put this ring here over the nail 
And then what you have is you have this little pin here, which if you remove it, like this, then bang, the shot falls. <laughs> If you had a troll, like in the Lord of the Rings, then the troll could do the work for you and you don't need the winch. That's exactly what I'm going to do, just to show you how far it flies. Okay, and... Ooh, bing! <laughs> Let's look at some slow motion. We can definitely confirm that the weapon that the game designers actually brought out works, in fact. As you see, it works perfectly well. Good job, guys from uh, Vikings War of the Clans. But um, there's one thing that is very peculiar that I don't have an explanation. In the slow motion, you can clearly see that the arm swings until about here, and then it stops and the chains swing up and launch the ball. And then, after the ball is on its way, the rest of the journey of the pole here ends. Now let's test how far the balls fly, so that we can calculate the distance of the big size weapon. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> all right, let's do a few calculations. First of all, this is a 1 to 20 scale model. So this is about 30 centimeters long and in reality, of course, it would be about 6 meters long. But now let me figure out. So this means 15 meters. That's a launch distance of 300 meters. Now let's see how heavy one of these golf balls would be if it would be 20, size, 20 times bigger. All right, okay seems like there will be 90 kilos, so this will be able to launch a 90 kilo object 300 meters far. <laughs> in fact, it would not, if that was only because of this old meme on the internet. In reality, if this would be 20 times bigger, it would be far heavier than 90 kilograms, because this is 42 millimeters and it would be like an 82 centimeter ball with a density of a golf ball that would certainly have a few hundred kilos, I don't know how much. But of course also these scales physically, I'm sure that you cannot simply blow it up everything by 20 and then you get the result. This obviously has a lot less power than a trebuchet uh, with a counterweight and the long lever. So why was it used? And actually, uh, if you follow some of the sources, this was the number one siege and then engine in the, in the medieval age. This means this was what you found on every battleground where someone would try to raid a castle. Um, and that has reasons, because if you compare it to a trebuchet, this isn't as powerful, true, but it is a lot lighter since it, it takes all its power from the twisted rope and not from a super heavy counterweight that you have to bring over with horses and carts to a, to a castle. But also, it is a lot easier to uh, install right on site. So this can be made from basic wood, as you see. Uh, and therefore it was far easier to construct and did, and, and did take a lot less wood and other resources. So did the Vikings have any of these? We don't know that because it's made from wood and that obviously doesn't last very long. It is also um, debatable if they really had enough room on their ships to bring it to some places. But there are sources that says during um, the attack of the Vikings against Paris there was engines like this on both sides. And uh, it is debatable whether that is true or was just an error in translation. But let me put it otherwise. This technology existed in the time of the Vikings. And it, it is well possible that they would have made some of these or captured it from others. So it is perfectly viable that the game designers included it into the game. So, I hope you liked this and good luck with the contest.
<laughs> because that's it for today. Thanks and <laughs> bye bye.